Good morning everyone. Um, I am going to make a, a necklace because I've had a lot of requests of people asking me to show everything I do. So I'm going to do one from A to Z, from beginning to end, so to make it clear how I do them. First off, I want to thank everyone that's sponsoring this month. As you can see, I'll, I'll put in focus the uh, the last ones because you've seen most of the names and only the last ones are the update so thank you all very much for sponsoring my channel I really appreciate it now we're going to go to uh, how I make the necklaces so uh, first you need um, a, a really pretty squ squishy pour and of course you can use anything that's left over and right now I'm going to be using s some colors that I mixed up a couple of days ago. They're pretty thick. And I'm not going to water them down because um, it's just, you know, for the purpose of showing, you know, how to set it up. So what you do is make a pretty squish that you think you're going to like. Uh, what I would do is um, consider the color of beads you have so they, you know somehow match. I, I, I like that. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to do totally a different color scheme, but I like it when they just, you know, have a little bit of uh, matching going on. A little bit of orange. But just for the purpose of... You can't even see it. Sorry about that. But just for the purpose of this uh, video, I'm putting uh, some colors on here. So it doesn't really matter how you put it on because there's no order in which I put the colors on. I just put the colors I have and I put them on there. Put put another uh, piece of paper on top. This time I'm using uh, Kodak paper and see when you pull it apart you can already see some of the cells forming because of the uh, silicone in the paint. Then I, uh, if it's needed, I will torch just a little bit, just like that, no more than that. And that gives you something to work with. Now you put these away and you let them dry for at least two days, because that's about how long it's going to take, especially if you got some a uh, little bit where it's thicker. Uh, now I still have some paper left. So I had some paints here that I used, well, I think a week ago. But as long as you put a lid on them, as you can see, they still, there's still enough in there to do something. So putting in a little bit of the blue color. I am adding a little white because there's not much white in there. This pretty thick. <laughs> Doesn't matter. There we go. Now, putting the top one on, and as you can see, I'm doing a little squish here and there. Some pops out, doesn't matter. You open it up. That is kind of pretty. Look at that. That is pretty. Now, I will give it another uh, little torch to bring out a couple of more cells. Both pieces. And this is this one I especially like because it has that green popping up. So this is uh, very pretty. So is this one. They are pretty. So we're going to keep those two. We're going to let them dry. Then uh, usually by now I'm thinking you know I'm going to take uh, a piece out of this one. And for the for the movie or for the video I'll show you what I'm going to do. This one is about the same color as I just squished, but this one's dry. So I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to stop this video and uh, I'm going to move downstairs because there, that's where my brother scan and cut is. And I'm going to make one, I think I'll make a, um, a rectangle one. So I'll take you guys down with the tripod and the camera because I got this one. This is a, the Nikon camera. 
uh, because I can put it on a tripod and I can exactly show you what I'm doing. It's a little bit easier. Might be a little bit dark downstairs, but you'll see what I'm doing. So, see you downstairs. Okay, we're downstairs, and uh, this is uh, the Scan and Cut brother from Brother Eels. And we are going to put it on. And first, before we do anything else, we're going to stick Yupos on the uh, on the mat. Make sure it sticks well. So I'm going to rub it on because that's really important. It shouldn't be moving because otherwise it won't cut really well. So I've chosen two that I'd like to do. And when I've cut them out, I'll determine which one, or maybe I'll do two. Okay, we got them on there really, really well. We go to home, say okay. We're going to load the mat. It's loaded. We're going to choose pattern. We're going to go to shapes. We're going to pick out a rectangle and I want them to be uh, laying flat. I'll get the, uh, the bezel. I'm going to go for the bigger bezels, these, with the, the nice loop at the end. See that? These are the ones I want. So I want two of them. Then what I do is measure it with one of these. This is a measuring tool. It can measure the outside if you do this. You can measure the outside, but when you use the other side, you can measure the inside. And when I measure it, it is, let's see, hold it up straight, 24 by Let me put it in a little better. 47. So that's what we're going for. And that's why this thing is so handy because it does the inside. It's really handy. You could do it with a, with another with a uh, <clears throat> measuring tape or something, but you have to be really careful because you want a tight fit. So we got the, me the measurements. You have on the brother scan and cut, you have a, a little thing that you can press so that you can determine both the width and the height. So the width we're going for is 47. So I'm going to do that. 47. And the height was 24. So we're going to put that to 24. That's it. Now it should fit. But then I'm going to say I want two, so I'm going to press two and set. Now I have them up here, but I don't see anything, so I don't know where it's going to be cutting. Well, it's going to be cutting up there, but I don't want that. So then I say scan the mat. So now it's scanning the mat. And it doesn't take that long, a couple of seconds and it's done. There it is. Now, what I want is, um, I want one on each Yupo. So, what I do is pull them down, give both Yupos one of those little rectangles, but then I want to see exactly where to place them. So, we're sliding it over. As you can see, I got a real good view of my Yupo. And uh, let's see what is the prettiest. Well, it's about right. Now I want some of that green in there also. That's it. Now I'm going down to the second one. The second one I want some of the uh, lighter color, but I also want a little bit of green. So I'm pulling it back there. That's it. I say OK. Another OK. OK. And I say cut. Now it's going to cut.
Now I press here to unload the mat. Finished cutting, I can turn it off. Close it up. And now I can peel off the Yippo. That's one, that's two. And depending on how thick your paint is, it'll go straight through or you will have um, one where you have to help it out a little bit because this is a little bit thicker paint but we'll do that upstairs this one as you can see fits perfectly in the uh, little bezel it is really pretty and all ready to uh, put some resin in so what I'm gonna do is take you guys upstairs again and I'm gonna mix the resin and show you how I fill the bezel so see you in a bit be right back okay now what what's left is um, to resin these uh, pieces because I have them both in their little trays now I'm going to take um, the resin and mix it and depending on which resin you have um, Let's see, this is about seven notes, eight, exactly eight grams of milliliters. That's one. Then the other one. Got to be careful that we don't put too much in. Fourteen. And we're going for sixteen. That's it. Now we have both components in the little cup. We can put away the the way the scale. And as you can see now, I am stirring up the resin with a little stick. And you got to make sure that you get the uh, the sides and the bottom and you just stir it all up don't mind the little air bubbles because they'll be gone before we uh, start pouring so just give it a good stir and the sides again because it's very important to take the sides with you There we go. That'll be enough. That stirred pretty well. Now, um, what I like to do is put um, the bezels on something that I can, um, you know, just pick up all, both of them at the same time. So I'll just use this little wooden plank that I have because you can put the um, that thing here that prevents it from laying flat, you can put that over the side. And if you really want to do it um, with a lot of caution, what I like to do is stick it down, stick them down because then they won't move. So when you move the uh, when you move the plank, the, it'll just stay flat. And prefer you got to do this without gloves; it's better. But I'll do it now, like this. So that's to prevent them from slipping off. Yeah, I'm just doing the other one. Yes, stick that underneath, like that putting the little thing over the side now before we're going to use this because I'm letting it uh, go a little bit hard um, I get another stick take out the little bezels the ones I cut the Yupos take them out and I put some glue inside and this, what I'm using is diamond glaze 
because it dries totally clear, it's almost like resin. And I make sure that when I put it on, I move it around a little bit so that it has no bubbles. Just like that. And I do the same with the other one. Mm, I like that way up. Because um, the bubbles in the resin, that's something you really have to avoid. So really pushing it down that it squishes out all the uh, all the glue. That's it. Then I'm going to use a hair dryer to dry it. Then I'm going to give the resin another little stir, making sure that it's uh, totally, totally smooth and both components have been stirred together. And then what we do is drop in that resin in the bezel tray. And I don't totally fill it straight away because I like to let it smooth out a little bit and with my oops and as you can see with my little stick I like to make sure that the whole thing is filled and the corners are filled and the sides and that's usually um, it takes a little bit of um, work and it's not something that you do in a minute then I'll take some on the stick and drop it in there where I need it and this is self-leveling so it'll self level out but it does need a little bit of um, uh, of you pushing it in the corners because you want the corners filled now I can already see that this is not flat because um, I'm seeing more here than at the top so what I'm gonna do is take off that uh, tape because usually I don't do it I can be pretty careful that I don't drop them so I'm taking off the tape, but if you want, you can do some sticky tape underneath if you're not really um, sure you're going to be careful. So now I'm dropping in a little bit more, making sure the corners are full and the resin is touching totally everything. and you will see it build up and you'll see when a little dome starts to form and that's what you really want just a little dome not too much though because it'll spill out now when you think you're almost ready for the second uh, pour what I do is uh, warm it to uh, release the air bubbles And when it's totally clear, you see no air bubbles anymore, that's when I start with the second layer. But you have to keep your eyes really close to the piece because you have to see where that little dome is going to start. And then you have to stop. Now the bottom one has already formed a little dome. 
and what I like to do is just fill in fill in the sides and what's really handy when you're doing this is if you have a light shining on it because then you can really see where it's not touching the sides and of course you can see if you got some hair or something else in it which I think I have in this one so I'm taking that out and then I'm gonna take the stick and slowly drip in more and make sure that the when you're doing this that it is level you'll see when it's not because then you'll see that one side of the bezel fills more than the other side and at last it's almost just you know adding drop by drop by drop because you have to really watch out that it doesn't overfill because it'll spill out I've had that once before had that happen so I already see a little bezel forming you know the little dome so then I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna do the same to the other one And I see a little bezel forming here, or a little dome. I call it a bezel, but it's a dome. Okay. Maybe one more drop there in the corner. Yep. I think they're pretty much as full as I want them to be. Maybe this one a little bit more up here. But just let it level out by itself, because that's important. Don't, uh, you know, do it too fast because that'll ruin it so now I'm gonna torch it again and the important part is that <coughs> in about 10 minutes to 15 minutes you have to come back, you have to torch it again. Because then you'll see that uh, there's a little bit more bubbles. Here's a little bit of hair or dust or whatever it was. A bit too small to be hair, but you can still do a lot of stuff to it. Yes, I see something I want out of it there. But you will keep seeing uh, really, really tiny air bubbles coming to the surface. And that's why you have to come back in and torch it. So um, this is almost as... Oh, I see another little air bubble. Uh, what you see is when you torch on top, you see like there's a little... Uh, oh, really tiny little bubbles all exploding and you see it getting clearer and clearer and clearer so that's what you need to do now these two pieces don't have glitter in them because I know some people don't like glitter so um, this is just a, a Yupo what I've put in no glitter only paint and they are pretty they are both they have something to them uh, even without the glitter I would go for glitter um, I just think, you know, it adds, because when you have jewelry and you're moving, I like it to grab the sun and, you know, reflect something. I, I like that. But this time I'll leave them as is. And right now all there is to do is uh, put them away and wait for them to cure, and that's about tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to put them away right now. I'm going to stop the video, and I'm going to get some bezels that are ready. And then I'll talk about beading. So, thanks for watching. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. 
Now, um, when they are ready, the uh, the little bezels, the dependents, you can uh, decide on what to do. Um, I'm just showing you a couple of uh, ideas. This one's with wax cord. I've shown that this one before. It has um, some beads that I uh, made, you know, the lamp work beads. But you can replace them for um, the uh, crystal beads that I normally put put in them. Uh, this is very easy to do. <coughs> I have all sorts of uh, beads and colors and as you can see they, these are fire polished. I, I really like those because they give that diff different dimension when the when the light catches them. But you could replace um, these lamp work beads for uh, crystal beads. Um, what you do is you take a length of uh, wax cord and you just put knots in them. That's really all it, all it is. As you can see here, that's a little copper bead that I put in. And I just put a knot, put on a bead, put another knot on. And there's only one thing that maybe is interesting about this. And let me see where I can show you. I'm looking for one of those beads as we speak. Let's see if I don't really know where I got them. Eh, here's a big one. Oh, and there's some wax cord. So as you can see, th this is the wax cord. What you want to do is just put a knot in it like that. That's where you start. Then just for the sake of showing you guys, I'll put it on a really big uh, a big bead. You put it up against the knot, as you can see here. Then you do another knot, but you don't pull it tight. What you want to do is, I'll get one of those things. Anything will really work, but I use one of these uh, little little things that you can see here. And you put that in, in your knot and you push down. So you don't really pull it tight. Wait a minute. <laughs> you just help help the knot down and then you pull that thing out. And then as you can see, it's sort of... You don't want to put it too close because then it, it can't spin. But as you can see, that helps with uh, determining where the, the the second knot goes. So that's really all it is. And if you wanted another one, you just put in another knot like that. Get one of those beads that you have picked out. I'm putting it in as we speak. And that's how you uh, fixate the uh, the distance between both of them. Then, of course, you fix it off with another knot and put in that little thing to help it go down. I have to rest it on the table here. But there it goes. As you can see now, both are fixed at, the, at exactly the uh, distance you want. So, no matter how you wear this, they will stay in place. Now, <clears throat> what I do is, and I do a couple. Um, in this one I did, let's see how many, four, four, uh, but I'd, maybe I do a, a little bit more if you have smaller beads, that looks prettier. But what you can do is um, go on eBay and uh, search for those uh, little uh, copper beads or bronze colored beads, I don't know. And this one has a little bale on it, as you can see here, there's a bale. That might be nice to hang the pendant on a bale. That is cute too. So it it has a lot of possibilities. And of course you can do the beading like I've shown before. I'm not going to show it now because it takes really long. This is another idea. A lot of those beads. And then you put them together here with, um, with the copper. That looks uh, really, uh, really cute too. So that's about all there is to it. Um, be creative. Um, 
take a cup of coffee, go on eBay and pick out the colors you really like. Um, I usually get yeah, a little bit shopping sick when I'm on eBay so I click on everything especially when it's on auction you know uh, but do don't click on everything you see at, at first because um, um, going a little further and finding out if they are cheaper down the road is really gonna save you a lot of money because sometimes they have them on there for like hundred beads for I don't know two or three dollars and then if you look further you'll see them even cheaper that's another little thing I made I, l I really like this this was when I was going to going to do some metal uh, metal I flattened that with a hammer and it's uh, it's kind of cute I like doing all sorts of stuff as you can see this is a, uh, a pendant that I did with uh, the polymer clay that's kind of cute too I got a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> oh yeah, little uh, little thing I put together just to see how it looks. These are all um, polymer beads that I made, and that looks kind of cute. They would look better if you um, put a little varnish on them. So, but that's uh, this is my, one of these things that I made. A little. Uh, I can just sometimes I bead for for forever the whole evening I can sit there beading this is another one that I made really pretty bracelet that's kinda of pretty made those little little things these things I made them too that's kinda of cute and I made this one a really really long one which you can uh, which you have to do around your uh, wrist many many times and then you can just close it and then you make them a little bit wider that's kind of cute too but the good thing is you know when you do things like this you have to do it when you're really really um, not stressed because you don't want to be stressed you want to do stuff like this when you're totally in Zen mode you have to get yourself a cup of coffee and put on a nice TV show, something like that. And just sit there and think about the colors. Lay them down to determine if they are the colors you really like. I'm trying to close this bracelet right now. There it goes. And as you can see, it takes a long time, but it does give you something that no one else has. Because no one... Um, will have the same colors or the same patterns but it is kind of cute nice little bracelet and I'm I'm pretty sure you'll feel like me you know when I make these things I really um I'm really happy because you know no one has one like it and it, I made it myself and it makes me feel good that I made that here's a little one that I did with a little wire I don't know I can't now nah, the camera is not so good for close-ups but this was my first try this that was pretty cool okay guys that's about it for today well for this video I mean because I I might be doing a uh, a bigger a big uh, pour later on but I'm not sure because I have to clean up the studio I had so many yuppos laying all over the place from the last couple of days and uh, it's time for me to really clean up um, I watched the Happy Valley the person that um, recommended that show to me the series Happy Valley that was really cool I love that so if you have any more um, series that you think I might like leave them behind I have seen Supernatural I've seen Dexter Breaking Bad you know all of those the Game of Thrones uh, the Good Witch, The Good Place. I've seen all of those. But if you have something that you might think I might enjoy, please leave it in the comments because I really appreciate that. So, putting all my stash away, I will try to stick these videos together and I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Love you all to pieces. Liebe euch alle. Bye bye.